Leaving Cert Higher Level Maths 2020, Paper 2. This is the solution video to question 5. Now, question 5 is our first probability question, and it's worth 25 marks. Part A says uh, two events A and B are such that the probability of A is 3 quarters, and the probability of A intersection B is a half. Find the probability of B given A. Give your answer as a fraction in its simplest form. So this means, what's the probability of B happening given that A has definitely happened or that A has already happened? So I think the easiest way to do this is to draw a little Venn diagram. So if we draw our Venn diagram here, we can have the probability of A happening and we can have the probability of B happening. Now with a Venn diagram, we always fill in the intersection first. So the probability of A intersection B is a half. And the probability of A happening is three quarters. So A in total is three quarters. If we already have a half in there, that means there's only a quarter left in, say, A on its own. So now we want to find the probability of B given A. Well, we can read that off our Venn diagram here. If we look at this, the probability that A happens is three quarters. There's one quarter here and there's a half here or two quarters. So one quarter is there, two quarters is there. The probability that B happens out of all of this is two quarters of three quarters. So two quarters out of the three quarters. So the probability of B given A is two quarters out of the three quarters, which is actually two out of three, which is two thirds. So on to part B then, the probability of A union B is equal to 11 over 12. Investigate if the events A and B are independent. So to do this, the, the test for independence is the probability of A times the probability of B is equal to the probability of A intersection B. If this is true, then the two events are independent. Now, to fill in, we already have a probability of A intersection B. We already have a probability of A. We just need to find the probability of B. So we could do this a couple of ways. We could use a formula or we could go back to our Venn diagram and find the rest of B there. So that's the way I'm going to do it. So I'm going to open up my Venn diagram here again. If I have a half here, a quarter here, this is A, this is B. And in total, the union is 11 over 12. So to get the rest of B here, it'll be 11 over 12 minus a half minus a quarter, which is equal to a sixth. So that means we have one sixth in here. So the probability of B is equal to one sixth plus one half, which is equal to two thirds. So that's the probability of B. Now I can fill in everything into my formula here. So the probability of A was three over four, multiplied by the probability of B, which we just found as two over three, equal to the probability of A intersection B, which is a half. So 3 by 2 is 6, 4 by 3 is 12, 1 over 2. So that is a half is equal to a half. And that means that they are independent. So we can say that A and B are independent. Okay, so on to part B then. Part B, um, a spinner consists of four segments as shown. Each segment is equally likely, likely to be landed on. Liam, Circa and Lee play a game in which the spinner is spun twice and the numbers landed on are added together. The result is then divided by three and the remainder is recorded. If the remainder is zero, Liam wins. If the remainder is one, Circa wins. And if the remainder is two, Lee wins. Is the game fair? I.e. are all three participants equally likely to win and justify your answer with relevant calculations. OK, so for this, this is a lot easier than it looks. Um, there aren't actually 
too many calculations in it. What I would do is I'd set up a table of all possible outcomes. So I'd have one, one, two, three. This is say the first spin and the second spin down here, I'd have one, one, two, three. And I'm just gonna make a two way table here like this. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to add together each of the bits in here. So one plus one is two, one and one is two, two and one is three, three and one is four. Then onto this one, we have the same, we're adding one again. So two, two, three, four. Now we're adding two to each of these. So one and two is three, three, two and two is four, three and two is five. And then one and three is four, four, five, and six. So this is the table of results of the numbers added together. Then we're told that the result is divided by three and the remainder is recorded. So let's divide each of these by three and now I'm gonna write the remainder in black. So if I divide two by three, it goes in zero times, remainder is two. Again here, remainder is two. Three goes into three once with a remainder of zero. Three goes into four once with a remainder of one. Remainder here will be two two, zero, one, remainder zero, remainder zero, remainder one, three into five goes once, remainder two, three into four, once remainder one, remainder one, remainder two, and remainder zero. So those black numbers there are my remainders. So each of these boxes in here, the 16 boxes are equally likely to happen because the spinner each section on the spinner is equally likely to be landed on. So each of these uh, individual remainders is equally likely to happen. So all I need to do is add together how many remainders of each there are. So remainder zero, remainder one, and remainder two. How many zeros are there? Just count them up. We've one, two, three, four, five. How many remainder ones? We've one, two, three, four, five. And how many remainder twos? One, two, three, four, five, six. So that means out of 16 perfect goes of this game, there'll be a remainder zero once, or, or five times, sorry, a remainder one, five times, and a remainder two, six times. So this game is not fair. Remainder two is more likely than remainder zero or remainder one. So our conclusion here, is the, fair, is the game fair? The answer is no. They don't ask for a reason, but we'll just give a reason that uh, remainder two is more likely than remainder one or remainder zero. So if you have any questions, uh, just ask in the comments below. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.